of the Holy Sila in Jerusalem is the most holy place of Christianity. Here took place the passion, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's why, today as in the past, the church was a must-be place for all the pilgrims. Since ancient times, a glorious miracle has taken place each year at the Church of the All-Holy Sepulchre in Jerusalem. The miracle is called the Holy Light. Have you heard about it? Maybe yes. But recently, there is a truth that is related to this event shocking the whole world. Are you curious about it? Let's dive deeper into today's video to see what is going on in the church and how terrifying it is. The Church of the Holy Sealer has been the site of miraculous events that have shocked and moved people, inspiring them to repent and pray. The Holy Fire originates as a divine light that manifests on the marble slab covering the stone bed upon which Jesus' body was placed for burial, a miraculous and unexplainable phenomenon. The divine light rising out of the stone in Jerusalem cannot be described in human terms, taking on different hues each year. You know what? The marble slab that covers the tomb of Christ was removed. As the group of scientists and religious authorities had access to the place, rumors immediately began to run around. Some rumors claimed it was possible to perceive a sweet aroma emanating from the tomb, reminiscent of the olfactory manifestations commonly associated with both Marian and saintly apparitions. Secondly, it was alleged that some of the measuring instruments used by scientists were altered by electromagnetic disturbances. As soon as they were placed vertically on the stone in which Christ's body rested, the devices either malfunctioned or ceased to work at all. But the journalist is much less hesitant regarding the electromagnetic disturbances recorded by the scientist's instruments. The phenomenon was confirmed by one of the scientists authorized to access the tomb. Later, one of the heads of the building and construction team, Antonia Moropolo, indicated that it is really hard to imagine that someone would be willing to put his or her reputation in danger just because of a publicity stunt. Moreover, the journalist testifies to the scientists' surprise during the opening of the slab. They hoped that the grave would be much lower than it was. Previously performed analyses with the instruments seemed to have been distorted by an electromagnetic disturbance. It seems, lacking any other explanatory element, that the tomb of Christ indeed affected instruments sensitive to electromagnetic disturbances. However, possible explanations on the motives for such a phenomenon do not fall short of speculation among those who are passionate about the Holy Sepulchre. And needless to say, those speculations range from the most elaborate to the most ridiculous. Only the tomb of Christ, the opening of the slab, and the revelation of the stone where the body of Christ would have rested have demonstrated that the tomb indeed matches the Jewish tombs of the first century. But according to Marie Armel Beaulieu, the essential core of the issue is to be found elsewhere. I would be delighted if a scientific expert proved that this stone was indeed where Christ rested, but even if it were proven otherwise, it would still be a sign of the resurrection. The journalist, who has been a resident in Jerusalem for the last 17 years, was part of the exclusive privileged group that was granted access to the place. As she confesses, the Church of the Holy Sepulchre is a disconcerting place. At first I did not like it very much. I was expecting a beautiful church, and I found this place of strange architecture which does not recall anything of the biblical scenes. There is no trace of the Garden of the Tomb, for example. But gradually I developed an attachment during the processions in which I participated along with the Franciscans. It is not a place to visit, but rather a place to pray. Thanks to a friar, I was able to walk all the way in until I reached the rock that supported the body of Christ, something I could not have imagined. I felt somehow weightless, but I remember all the details. I will never go visit the Holy Sepulchre 
in the same way. Right now, they have replaced the marble slab on top, and one can only partially see the crypt through an opening protected with a shielded glass. But I know the stone is there. I had the habit of genuflecting before the tomb of Christ, and then I reflected and thought it was absurd, as there was no real presence there, and that one should rather genuflect in front of the blessed sacrament. But in the holy sepulchre, in front of this tomb, there is a real absence, an empty tomb, a miracle before which all knees bend, in heaven, on earth, and in hell. Jesus' tomb opened for the first time in centuries. The original rock where Jesus Christ is traditionally believed to have been buried in Jerusalem has been exposed to the light of day for the first time in centuries. According to an exclusive report by National Geographic, a partner in the project at the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, the original rock surface has been covered with marble slabs since at least 1555 and possibly longer. During a conservation project to shore up the shrine surrounding the tomb, a team from the National Technical University of Athens in Greece realized that they would need to access the substructure of the shrine to restore it, said Frederick Hebert, the archaeologist in residence at the National Geographic Society. Some theological historians believe that Jesus was a real man who was born sometime around the year one or earlier in Bethlehem in modern-day Palestine, only later to move to Nazareth in Israel. He is thought to have died around the year 29. The site venerated as the tomb of Jesus is encased in structures like a Russian nesting doll. According to the Bible, Jesus was laid to rest on a stone platform in a cave hewn out of a rock wall. In 326, the first Christian emperor of Rome, Constantine, sent his mother, Helena, as a representative to Jerusalem where locals pointed out one cave among an area of first-century burials that was said to hold the tomb of Jesus. Constantine had a shrine installed over the cave. The original top of the cave was removed so that pilgrims could look down and view the slab where Jesus' body was said to have rested. This shrine is known as the Holy Edicule, and it was last reconstructed after a fire in the early 1800s according to National Geographic. The Holy Edicule itself sits within the Church of the Holy Sepulchre or Church of the Resurrection, which is a famed pilgrimage site and working monastery. It's built directly over the cave where Jesus was said to be buried. Another wing sits over the site where he is said to have been crucified. Three sects jointly manage the site. The Greek Orthodox Church, the Roman Catholic Church, and the Armenian Orthodox Church. The three groups agreed in 1958 that conservation of the edicule was necessary, but it took nearly 50 years to agree on a method and to secure funding. There was a moment in which you could see on the faces of the important people of the church a certain happiness that this has actually happened, he but said of the conservation. A grid of iron bars installed in the 1940s held the edicule structure upright until the project started. Now, he but said, the Greek team, with years of experience under their belts of shoring up ancient structures like the Parthenon, will inject mortar around the marble slabs that make up the edicule. They've peeled back marble slabs from the 19th century that were in turn covering slabs from the 15th century, covering slabs from the 12th century, which themselves shield the original bedrock. As to whether the tomb ever contained the remains of the historical Jesus, it's a matter of faith. There are no remains to analyze or DNA evidence to exhume. We know that Romans crucified people and that people were buried there in the first and second centuries. It's also known that there was an oral tradition about the site of Jesus's burial 300 years later when Helena came to visit Jerusalem. Holy fire miracle, true or false? Yep. We embark on a journey to explore one of the most controversial and fascinating events that take place in Jerusalem, the Holy Fire at the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. Every year on Great Saturday, the day before Orthodox Easter, this ancient tradition captures the attention of believers and skeptics alike. 
Join us as we uncover the mystery behind the proposed miracle and whether it is true or false. Before diving into the enigmatic phenomenon of the Holy Fire, let's first understand the significance of the location where it occurs, the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. Situated in the heart of Jerusalem's old city, this hallowed site is believed to house both the crucifixion site and the tomb of Jesus Christ. As such, it is one of the holiest places for Christians around the world. The Holy Fire Ceremony is a centuries-old tradition that draws thousands of pilgrims to the Church of the Holy Sepulchre each year. The ceremony is conducted by the Greek Orthodox Patriarch of Jerusalem, and it is said to symbolize the resurrection of Jesus Christ. According to tradition, a divine flame miraculously descends from heaven and ignites the Patriarch's candle as he prays inside the tomb of Christ. This sacred flame then spreads to the candles held by the faithful, signifying the light of Christ's resurrection. More specifically, the proposed miracle happens as blue light is said to emit within Jesus' tomb, rising from the marble slab covering the stone bed, believed to be that upon which Jesus' body is to have been placed for burial. The light is believed to form a column of fire from which candles are lit. This fire is then used to light the candles of the clergy and pilgrims in attendance. The fire is also said to spontaneously light other lamps and candles around the church. Pilgrims and clergy say that the holy fire does not burn them. For devout Christians, the holy fire ceremony is a profound and deeply spiritual experience. They view the event as an undeniable miracle, a divine manifestation of God's presence on earth. Pilgrims often attest to feeling an overwhelming sense of awe and reverence during the ceremony, which reinforces their faith in the resurrection. However, skepticism surrounds the alleged miracle. Critics argue that the Holy Fire ceremony could be a well-orchestrated illusion or a product of human intervention. Some theories propose hidden devices or techniques used to create the fire artificially. Additionally, the strict control of the ceremony by the Greek Orthodox Church raises suspicions among skeptics. The controversy surrounding the Holy Fire ceremony has prompted various attempts to investigate its authenticity. Over the years, authorities have restricted the use of cameras and electronic devices during the ceremony, making it challenging to capture definitive evidence either supporting or debunking the miracle. In the past, there were instances of authorities denouncing the Holy Fire as a fraud. Pope Gregory Nanifin in 1238 and scholar Adamantios Corias in the 18th century expressed doubts about its validity. Even Ottoman traveler Evlia Celebi suggested that the phenomenon was a result of a hidden monk's trickery. In more recent times, historians and scientists have attempted to demystify the Holy Fire. In 2005, author and historian Michael Kolopoulos demonstrated that white phosphorus, a naturally occurring substance, could cause spontaneous ignition of candles. This has led some to speculate that the Holy Fire might have been a result of ancient chemical reactions. The Holy Fire was not a genuine miracle, but rather a carefully orchestrated event. They reveal that the fire was ignited using regular lighters or natural candles, intended to deceive the believers into thinking it was a miraculous occurrence. Intriguingly, the official website of the Patriarchate removed the term miracle from its description of the holy fire, raising further questions about the event's authenticity. While some believers continue to have unwavering faith in the Holy Fire, the evidence presented by skeptics raises doubt about its supernatural origins. So, is the miracle of Holy Fire true or false? We don't know. But one thing is clear. As visitors to the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, it is essential to approach the ceremony with an open mind, acknowledging both its historical and spiritual significance 
while also contemplating the possibility of human intervention. What is the ceremony of holy light? Most Christians outside of the Orthodox Church know little about the ceremony of holy light, also known as the ceremony of holy fire, but it is one of the most sacred rituals in Orthodox Christianity and dates back to at least the 8th century. Every Easter, known as Pasha among Orthodox Christians on Easter Saturday, holy light is said to miraculously appear in the tomb of Christ inside the Church of the Holy Sepulchre in Jerusalem. The Greek Orthodox Patriarch retrieves the light in the form of lit candles from which the holy fire is passed from person to person gathered in the church, each with a candle, and from there is carried to churches across the world. Tens of thousands of pilgrims from across the world flock to the Church of the Holy Sepulchre in Jerusalem to witness the ceremony. The church is packed. The liturgy is so popular that not everyone who wishes to will be able to take part in the liturgy inside the church. Many participate in the courtyard immediately outside the main entrance and even in the streets beyond, where metal barriers are placed by Israeli forces to regulate the crowds. The build-up to the ceremony begins at 10 a.m. in the Armenian Cathedral of St. James, where the Muslim Jude family, key holders of the Church of the Holy Sepulchre since at least the 12th century, temporarily entrust the key to the Armenian Patriarch. The Patriarch and other church leaders then process to the Holy Sepulchre, an approximately 10-minute walk. At 11 a.m., the key is handed to the Muslim doorkeeper Nusaybeh, who opens the door, and those lucky enough to be allowed in throng the church. The atmosphere inside is described as electric, a buzz with excitement and anticipation. Pilgrims carry candles with which to receive the holy light, and from mid-morning the faithful lift their voices in traditional songs and chanting led by the Arab Christians, dancing and beating drums. At 1 p.m. silence falls and the civil authorities make their way through the closely pressing crowd to the Aedicule, the shrine around the tomb of Christ. They enter the shrine to check that no source of the fire has been left inside it. They then seal the shrine with wax, a ritual that mirrors Matthew's gospel account of Roman soldiers sealing Jesus' tomb to ensure the disciples would not steal his body. The waiting crowd then begins to chant Christ is risen in many different languages, including Greek, Arabic, Russian, Romanian, and English. At 1.45 p.m., the Patriarch of the Greek Orthodox Church arrives at the head of a procession of clergy. Slowly, they circle the Aedicule three times. His ceremonial robes are then removed and checked to prove he does not carry any hidden sources of fire. The wax seal around the shrine is broken and a single oil lamp is taken inside and placed on the stone where Christ's body is said to have been laid. Dressed only in a humble white robe, the Greek patriarch enters the edicule carrying two bundles of unlit candles. Each bundle contains 33 candles symbolizing the 33 years of Jesus' life. He kneels before the stone and prays, reciting an ancient prayer passed down through the centuries. Opinion varies on exactly what happens next and whether it is miraculous or not. Some say that light comes down from the heavens through a skylight in the edicule, others that it emanates from the stone itself. Only the patriarch is witness to exactly what happens. When the Patriarch enters the Aedicule, all the lights in the church are extinguished and the expectant, silent crowd waits in the darkness. Sometimes the wait is several minutes long, other years it is very quick. When the Patriarch emerges from the Aedicule, his bundles of candles aflame, shouts of joy erupt from the crowd. The holy fire is used first to light the candles held by the patriarchs of the Armenian and Coptic Orthodox Church who are at the entrance to the Edicule and then it's carried out into the crowd. 
those nearest push forward for a chance to light their candle from the patriarchs. The flame quickly spreads around the church, passing from candle to candle amid shouts of joy. Over the next few days, the Holy Fire will also be spread to Orthodox churches across the world as special lanterns are lit for emissaries to carry the flame back to their own countries. A wise man once said, What we believe always remains intellectually possible. It never becomes intellectually compulsive. I have an idea that when this ceases to be so, the world will be ending. That is, in this age we walk by faith, not by sight. By God's design and providence, the world contains no proof that could compel belief by force, nothing that would prove the truth of Christianity so that faith was no longer necessary to discipleship. Scientific facts can be proven in a lab. For example, if you add fire to gunpowder, this produces an explosion. That is not a hypothesis or a theory. It may be considered a fact. Faith in the explosive result of combining fire and gunpowder is not required. All that is required is that you watch for yourself what happens. The truth of Christianity is not a fact like this. Faith is still and always will be required. That is one of the reasons faith will be rewarded on the last day. That said, the annual miracle of the Holy Fire in Jerusalem does come rather close to proof. For about 1,200 years, every year at the eve of Pasha, a fire is supernaturally kindled in the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. The Patriarch enters the Edicule, the Tomb of Christ, with a bunch of unlit candles, kneels down, says a prayer, and then the candles are supernaturally lit. He emerges from the tomb and shares the light with others. At that time, some candles held by the faithful throughout the church are spontaneously lit before their eyes, even before the fire from the tomb reaches them. This is called the Holy Fire, and it has been occurring faithfully for centuries. Orthodox take it for granted as a sign of the abiding presence of the risen Christ. Non-Orthodox have been rather more skeptical of the supernatural origin of the fire. For them, the fire is not supernatural at all, but is lit every year by the Patriarch behind closed doors, presumably after he smuggled a Bic lighter into the tomb undetected. Throughout the years, skepticism has reigned, especially in some Protestant quarters. One English visitor to Jerusalem, John Kelman, wrote in about 1912 that in the Church of the Holy Sepulchre on Easter Eve, the sham miracle of the Holy Fire has been enacted annually for at least a thousand years. For him, it was a symbol of the light of Christ, not a miracle. Rather later, another Englishman, H. V. Morton, wrote the same thing, only more entertainingly. The crowds have been told time and again that the Holy Fire is a piece of symbolism, but nothing will shake their belief that on this day it descends from heaven into the tomb of Christ. I thought what an extraordinary thing it was that a frenzied ceremony that might have occurred in a grove of Adonis should have taken place at the tomb of Christ. A little later still, yet another Englishman, the Methodist military chaplain Leslie Farmer, wrote after witnessing it that the superstitious believe that the appearance of this fire is a yearly miracle from heaven. There was a miracle. It was that no conflagration was caused. I stood in my sheltered corner and gazed fearfully at the scene expecting catastrophe at any moment. What is strange is that both Morton and Farmer admitted that they saw people passing the newly kindled fire over their faces, beards and clothes without being burned, but they offered no explanation for why this was. Surely such a thing cries out for some comment. For the fire was not passed so quickly as not to burn, but was held in place long enough to catch hair and clothes on fire if it was a normal fire. Film footage of this can be seen here. We note too that 
for all Morton saying that the crowds were told time and again that it was just a bit of liturgical symbolism and not a miracle, a recent patriarch said precisely the opposite. That is, he insists that he experiences a miracle every year and does not kindle the fire. One person asked the patriarch about what actually happened in the tomb. The patriarch replied, I find my way through the darkness towards the inner chamber in which I fall on my knees. Here I say certain prayers that have been handed down to us through the centuries, and having said them, I wait. Sometimes I may wait a few minutes, but normally the miracle happens immediately after I have said the prayers. From the core of the very stone on which Jesus lay, an indefinable light pours forth. It usually has a blue tint, but the color may change and take many different hues. It cannot be described in human terms. The light rises out of the stone as mist may rise out of a lake. It almost looks as if the stone is covered by a moist cloud, but it is light. This light each year behaves differently. Sometimes it covers just the stone, while other times it gives light to the whole sepulchre, so that people who stand outside the tomb and look into it will see it filled with light. The light does not burn. I have never had my beard burnt in all the 16 years I have been patriarch in Jerusalem and have received the holy fire. The light is of a different consistency than a normal fire that burns in an oil lamp. At a certain point, the light rises and forms a column in which the fire is of a different nature so that I am able to light my candles from it. When I thus have received the flame on my candles, I go out and give the fire first to the Armenian patriarch and then to the Coptic. Then I give the flame to all people present in church. In other words, the skeptics ask us to believe that the patriarch is a liar, as have been all his predecessors in that office for the past 1200 years. That would be a miracle harder to believe than that of the holy fire itself. Surely in all that time, someone would have blown the gaff and let out the secret of the hoax, and one wonders too about the hundreds and thousands of worshippers who have testified that their own candles were supernaturally lit at that time. For all that, we of course still walk by faith, and the holy fire is given to comfort and encourage believers, not to convert skeptics. We have our Lord's own testimony that no miracle could do that, even the miracle of someone rising from the dead. But I would like to leave the reader with two questions. Why is it that other religions can offer nothing as compelling as the holy fire and that this is found in Christianity alone? And why is it that the holy fire occurs only in the Orthodox Church? Do other miracles occur? There have been many eyewitness accounts over the years of pilgrims' candles miraculously igniting as they waited in the dark church before the patriarch emerged with the holy light. There is also a belief that the holy fire has special properties and for the first 33 minutes will burn without heat, so the faithful can immerse their faces and hands in the flames without being burnt. In 2020, the Church of the Holy Sepulchre remained closed to the public at Easter because of coronavirus restrictions. However, the ceremony of holy light still took place, with Greek patriarch, his beatitude, Theophilos III, and a dozen or so senior clergy officiating. 2021 saw a welcome return of the faithful, although travel restrictions meant that those present were mostly locals. This year, it is hoped that pilgrims from across the world can once again come to take part in the ceremony and witness what many Orthodox Christians regard as one of the greatest of all Christian miracles. It is also hoped that attempts by the local civil authorities to restrict the numbers able to enter the church will be reversed. The mystery of the Holy Fire Ceremony at the Church of the Holy Sepulchre in Jerusalem continues to captivate believers and skeptics alike. While the ceremony holds deep spiritual significance for many, its authenticity remains a subject of debate. Whether a genuine miracle or a well-kept tradition, the Holy Fire is an integral part of Jerusalem's religious heritage and continues to be a source of wonder and intrigue 
for all who witness it. As you plan your visit to Israel, consider including the Holy Fire ceremony in your itinerary. Whether the miracle of Holy Fire is true or false, experiencing this ancient tradition can be an eye-opening encounter that leaves a lasting impression on your spiritual journey. Well, that's all about today's video. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please like and subscribe to our channel. Remember to turn on the notification bell to watch the latest videos from us. See you in the next videos. Goodbye.